guys, welcome from sunny South Florida. Today, we'll discuss how you can leverage CenterStack's hosted platform to migrate a file server to the cloud in five minutes or less by reusing existing file shares, NTFS permissions, and Active Directory users. But first, let me explain why you should spend the next few minutes learning how to save time and money with CenterStack's hidden gem of a solution. I know that sounds like a bit of hyperbole, so tell me, Jeff, what do you think? Well, I can't tell you how many times a new customer says, this is exactly what I've been looking for, and I had no idea it existed. Why haven't I found CenterStack before? Well, that's why we're here, and we hope you'll be saying the same thing to yourself in just a few minutes. In fact, here are some customers saying it for themselves. Okay, of course you can read Craig's testimony for yourself. I can tell you that when I met him, he was really pleased to find a solution that allowed him to migrate file shares, NTFS permissions, and users to the cloud. Jeff, anything you can add here? So Blake's comments don't relate to the file server migrations that we're focused on in this webinar. However, we will briefly cover the ability to provide remote access to a non-migrated file server when we talk about the bonus features. And it is worth mentioning, since no other file sharing platform offers this kind of VPN replacement for existing file shares with deep Windows integration. At any rate, I guess we should continue reviewing what we'll cover during the demo. Okay, before we go any further, a few brief introductions. My name is Franklin Peart, and I'm one of GladNet's founders. Uh, incidentally, GladNet is the parent company responsible for the development of CenterStack. I'm joined today by my colleague, Jeff Reed. Uh, he's one of our principal solution architects, and later we'll be hearing from Mark Trimachat, head of global storage business development for Amazon Web Services. So let's get to it. Jeff, why don't you start with a brief outline of what we'll be showing in the demo? Sure. We're going to show how to install the CenterStack agent on a file server and use it to migrate some file shares into Amazon S3. We're then going to show how user permissions are automatically configured by logging in as two different users with different permissions. Basically, we're going to prove that you can get that done in a couple of minutes with the hosted version of CenterStack. Cool. In addition to the demo, we'll outline how CenterStack helps you save up to 90% of your migration costs, not just by saving you setup time, but also by reducing the time it takes for users to get acclimated to the new platform. We'll also discuss the ability to provide remote access to a private file server on-prem or in the cloud. This is useful for those who may not be quite ready to move their data into the cloud. The cool thing about this is that you can later use CenterStack to migrate that file server with the click of a button. And then we'll talk about the server and endpoint recovery features that are included with CenterStack. Sounds like we've got a lot of cool things to talk about, so let's get started. Okay, before we dive into the demo, let's just take a minute to review the primary use cases. Basically, the migration we're about to show you covers two broad use cases and the challenges associated with them. For some companies, an on-prem file server needs to be replicated to the cloud to enable remote access and create a second copy of the data off-prem for business continuity. For others who have already migrated to Host Exchange and perhaps Office 365, file sharing may be the last service preventing them from getting rid of their on-prem server or forcing them to buy a new one. The problem is that sometimes they just don't have the time or resources to handle the setup and training costs. Jeff, can you add some details from your experience with customers who want to replicate their file server to the cloud? Sure. I was just working with a customer who wanted to migrate their file server to the cloud. They were worried about disrupting on-prem user workflows. I showed them how we could enable remote access for the remote users without changing the user experience. They were able to avoid buying a new server and can retire the on-prem server whenever they feel comfortable. So, okay, that's, that's, it. that's interesting. Um, anything else you can add to that? Yeah, this use case is also popular with customers that have multiple remote locations and want to maintain a consistent view of their data from different locations. All right, that's a lot of words, Jeff. Um, how would you summarize that? Well, basically the customers I work with are interested in business continuity and centrally manage remote access at a low cost with almost no setup time. Got it. Now, what about the pure migration case where you want to get rid of the file server? 
While the end user experience is similar, and so is the deployment model, the main difference here is motivation. Wait, what do you mean by that? Well, in this case, the file server is being replicated to the cloud so it can be retired. It's just like you said, Franklin, file sharing services are the last thing perpetuating the need for on-prem mm, infrastructure. Gotcha. Typically, these companies have already migrated email and application services to the cloud, and they just want to get rid of their file server. Being able to quickly replicate the shares, NTFS permissions, and users reduces the configuration and training costs, which makes it really easy to retire that file server. All right, guys, we're almost at the demo. Just a few more slides, but let's emphasize that key point. CenterStack's approach to file server migration eliminates the majority of the costs of cloud migration while maintaining the traditional controls and security of on-premise infrastructure. Exactly. It could easily take hours for an admin to get their heads around the current data set and then manually copy its data, folder structures, permissions, and users to a cloud service. We automate all of that. The other problem is that many popular cloud services have an access and sharing model that is based on decentralized user-based ownership. We maintain control by leveraging the existing file server models where shares have access control lists defined by Active Directory users, groups, and NTFS permissions. Jeff, I couldn't have said it better myself. The reality for a lot of small businesses is that you just don't have time to manage a migration and retrain your workforce, not to mention the increased support burden that inevitably occurs when users can't find their beloved S drive, for example. Anyway, enough talk. Let's see an example of how this works. Once we've completed the demo, we'll pull up an architectural diagram and take some questions. All right, Jeff, what are we going to see? The demo will quickly show how to replicate file shares, NTFS permissions, and Active Directory users to Amazon S3 storage. It will then demonstrate the access experience for two different users. Once that's done, you can either retire the on-prem file server or keep it around so on-prem users have no change in workflow. This is a Windows Server uh, 2016 machine with a couple of uh, shares, one for the sales group and one for a support group. And you'll see that okay. this is actually a few files that are in each share uh, for the purposes of this test. And what I'd like to do is migrate uh, this to CenterStack. Okay, sounds good. So let's walk through the process of getting that migration done. So we'll walk through uh, registering as a partner, configuring a tenant, downloading the agent, uploading the shares, migrating the shares and users, and then the user experience. So let's start then by navigating to the CenterStack site and registering as a partner in an account. So I've already uh, signed in and registered, but uh, the first time uh, registration page looks like this, but we'll skip out of here and I will sign in as an account I just recently created. There's an empty tenant uh, that I created ahead of time here, but uh, within hosted center stack, uh, but there's no uh, shares migrated at this point. Okay, okay. Um, well, just so people don't think we're cheating, uh, the, the things that we're skipping through really take no time to just um, web configurations. So the bulk of the time really is spent uh, downloading, installing the client, and uh, of course, th the migration of the shares. So we want to show how fast that part is. All yeah. right, so Jeff, let's go ahead and log into that uh, tenant and see if we can get that agent downloaded to your server. Right, so I have a tenant admin in that tenant. Okay. And the server agent uh, download is here. Awesome. And we're 64-bit file server. Now, this server, I've actually already installed the server agent to save a little bit of time, but it's uh, simple as uh, running this MSI installer. It will actually say that it's already installed. We're going to skip out of here in the interest of time, and right. we'll navigate to the first-time user experience that the user sees um, when the server agent fires up. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. So we installed the server agent, we rebooted the machine, and now we have the opportunity to migrate the shares. So let's see right. how long that's going to take us. Okay. So you're migrating the sales folder, all right? All right. And we're going to migrate all the permissions. And synchronizing permissions automatically. Cool. All right. All right. 
and so continue. so we picked these up uh, so just to make sure i'm understanding this so yep. uh on that previous screen we picked up those collaborators from the shear permissions on the machine automatically yeah that's correct and we can actually see the you know there's a difference in the sharing permissions on the two shares uh support share or team folder has a support group and uh sales has a sales group and awesome. okay didn't want to click that i want to migrate some users there's a couple of test users here all right that will migrate uh neil is in the support group and zig is in the sales group all right and we don't need Good. to send them email and we can actually uh skip this because they're getting the permissions to access the team folders via the uh sharing permissions and the ntfs permissions okay uh, so then we should be able to go to a client machine. So this is another virtual Wait, machine. Wait, so but Jeff, let me just you. pause because yep. maybe that happened too fast. So, so you're telling me that once you got through that interface, uh, those shares have been migrated to Center Stack are now available from the client. Yeah, so we can look at it from the server end, right? Uh, so the uh, team folders that we just migrated are displayed here, sales and support, and they correspond to the uh, share folders on the Windows Server 2016 machine. And the collaborators cool. correspond to the share level permissions and the folder permissions correspond to the NTFS permissions. Of Excellent. The all right, so everything's, so everything's all migrated to the cloud. Okay, let's prove it. Let's go to the client and see what happens when Zig logs in. Right, so Zig can see the sales team folder, but he can't see the support team folder. So there's a couple of Word documents in there. He could download them. Uh, do we want to okay. sign in as uh, Neil? Sure, why not? We can Neil do can that. Do. Is that right? I think so. I suppose I could copy it from somewhere if that's not the right email address for Neil. There's Neil. All right. And he's a support folder. Cool. Right. I guess we'll go ahead and show what it looks like in the uh, desktop client for Windows. Okay. So now this is going to create a map drive on the desktop for direct access. Right. So prior uh, to installing it, we just have a C drive, and I guess there's a share there, but no M drive until this is installed. Well, and then I'm not a local administrator of this machine, so bear with me. And we should see the sign-in prompt shortly. Oh, that's right, it does it in the uh, context of the user that signed in, right? So this is Neil. Okay. Right. Cool. And there's the M drive with the support team folder in it and the files that are awesome. migrated. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. So all our features synced on demand, virgining, file locking, all these things are now enabled on this drive um, for Neil's access based on that quick migration um, from the server agent into our hosted environment. Excellent. All right, so, um, so there you have it, guys. Uh, uh, I, know, I know this video took a little longer than five minutes, but um, presumably when you're doing this without two chatty engineers on the line, you can get this done very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm obviously biased, but that was pretty impressive. Again, I'd like to encourage everyone to send in their questions via chat, but in the meantime, let's take a closer look at what's happening under the covers. Jeff, that went by really fast. Was it all smoke and mirrors? Will it be that fast with a huge data set? Did you really just publish my file shares across the internet? Yes, I really did. It's that easy, but also very secure. Can you explain how we maintain that security? Sure. So in this network diagram, all the connections are made using SSL. So the file servers and the endpoints are just pointing to an HTTPS URL. When I selected the file shares, CenterStack's server agent started to copy the files, permissions, and users to the CenterStack EC2 servers and Amazon S3 storage. But the first thing it does is to copy the folder structure so that it can be immediately available to the endpoints. 
And why exactly do we make that optimization? Well, in that way, it doesn't matter how big the data set is, the endpoints can see the entire folder structure almost immediately. And furthermore, because the center stack clients only download the data to the endpoint when a user opens a file, we're able to have the whole system up and running in a few minutes, regardless of data set size. It's difficult to make it look this easy, but I can assure you it's not smoke and mirrors. Gotcha, gotcha. But surely the laws of physics cannot be violated. It must take time to migrate a large data set across a network. Of course it does, but we have all sorts of algorithms to handle those details. For example, and to answer your question, when a user opens a file on the endpoint that hasn't been copied to the cloud yet, we take advantage of the open connection of the file server and pull that data to the front of the upload queue. So the files that are used more frequently are copied to the cloud first as they are requested by users instead of end users waiting for everything to get uploaded as they would with most other platforms. Very cool. I like that. It's kind of sync on demand, cache on demand, upload on demand, etc. All right, let's handle some of these questions. We've got a few common ones listed here to get us started. Uh, first of all, yes. Even though this demo and most of this session is focused on the use of the hosted version of CenterStack, we do provide the software if you want to host it for yourselves in AWS or on-premise. In fact, that's how we're able to provide direct access to on-prem file servers and present them as cloud storage to external clients. And whether you self-host or use the hosted environment we featured here, you won't need to use a VPN. Another common set of questions revolve around the use of free solutions like Dropbox or OneDrive for Business. Uh, anything to add there, Jeff? Well, those are great solutions, especially OneDrive for Business, which is already included with Office 365. But the first challenge is how to get there. That's where CenterStack makes a big difference. You're not asking users to stop and learn something completely new. And as an admin, you don't have to start from scratch with configuration and setup. Instead, you have a seamless transition from life without cloud to life with cloud because CenterStack is doing all the heavy lifting for you while maintaining file server oriented centralized controls. The platform also adds value with features like auditing, reporting, and ransomware detection. All right, let me stop you right there. Let's take a moment to dig deeper into the benefits of the migration we just witnessed. Tell me a little bit more about the security and control capabilities of this platform. Franklin, we honestly don't have enough time, but we could highlight a few important ones. Okay, go for it. Dude, enough with the role play. You've been doing this longer than I have. You tell me. <laughs> all right, all right. I, I don't mean to be disingenuous. It's just easier to present with this format. All right, so you already mentioned that all the connections are being made over SSL. Other interesting security features include endpoint encryption and device management for data loss prevention. In a nutshell, this means that you're protected when a device gets lost or stolen since users have to authenticate to decrypt the data on the device and CenterStack's data can be remotely wiped from the device. You can also blacklist or whitelist devices depending on whether you're following a permissive or restrictive access model. Ransomware detection is supported through one of our many group policies. Essentially, it provides a behavioral heuristic that quarantines endpoints which are behaving in non-human ways. We also provide reports and the ability to audit every single action that happens in the platform from an admin making changes in configuration to an end user modifying files. We've already discussed the benefits of maintaining the existing NTFS permissions. So the last thing I'd like to mention is our endpoint recovery, which allows the admin to specify which folders to back up from the user profile. These folders are automatically restored when our user logs into a new machine. Basically, it's a free endpoint backup. Neat. All right, Jeff, help me out with the usability benefits. For me, the biggest thing is that end users can continue to use the existing file server with zero changes. Mm. In fact, the file server just views the center stack server as another consumer of map drives. And end users get a map drive that is based on a file system driver, so it works exactly like the C drive they're used to. This kind of approach allows us to combine cloud features like mobile access and sharing with familiar controls from the Windows environment. Thanks, Jeff. Um, from the performance side of the equation, our technologies provide class-leading scalability, which improves the user experience 
while lowering the costs for endpoints. In the interest of time, let's spend a minute or two on direct server access and endpoint backup before we outline your savings. Okay, our first bonus. If you do have file servers that need to remain on premise, or you just want to avoid replication for compliance or security reasons, you can leverage our self-hosted platform in AWS to cloud enable existing file servers. Basically, all that means is that CenterStack will make the on-prem file server look like a cloud so that it can be accessed remotely while maintaining high levels of security. As a partner, this is automatically available to you, and if you make a purchase today, we'll provide you with five free NFR licenses for the self-hosted version. In addition to that, CenterStack allows you to automatically recover the data for your endpoints and servers. Server backup is more interesting when you're running our self-hosted platform in front of your own servers, as I mentioned on the last slide, but our endpoint recovery guarantees that a user can always restore their data to any machine just by installing a CenterStack client and entering their credentials. So you can avoid the cost of a separate endpoint backup solution. Which brings us to the money slide where we'll establish just how much you can save by using CenterStack. Franklin, can you explain where some of these numbers are coming from? Sure. For all of these estimates, we're assuming you've got a single file server and 10 users, just as an example. So for setup time, um, we're assuming that it's a one to two day job for an admin to recreate folder hierarchies and permissions, which explains the $800 number. And there's a time it takes for the admin to train the 10 users and field any support requests. There, we're estimating a cost of about $240 per user. Now, most platforms charge $60 per server, and we don't, so that saves you another $720. And for cybersecurity and recovery features, the estimates are based on typical annual costs for servers and endpoints. Finally, since most platforms are in the $15 range per user per month, our pricing saves you another $1,680 in annual licensing costs for 10 users. Wow, that seems like a lot, but I guess it all adds up. It sure does. In fact, some of these estimates are quite conservative and could cost significantly more. But even with our conservative estimates, you're talking about reducing your costs from more than $7,200 to less than $720, which represents a 90% reduction in cost. And for that price, you're getting unlimited file servers, 10 user licenses for a year, a terabyte of Amazon S3 storage, and you can lock in that low rate with minimal risk since we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, not to mention the free backup for your endpoints. So, in summary, we've reviewed the benefits of using CenterStack to migrate your file server to Amazon S3 storage in five minutes. If you need to provide remote access or retire an on-premise file server, you've got to at least give CenterStack a try, especially if you've been blocked by resource constraints. So please, try it now. We'll throw in a free assisted installation for the first 25 users who make a purchase today. Just go to CenterStack.com, click on the partner link to create an account, and then log in. Navigate to account information under the menu in the left panel, and you can then click on the purchase link to complete the wizard finalizing your purchase. Contact us via support at gladnet.com. Again, that's support at gladnet.com to redeem your free assistant installation or with any other questions you might have.